This problem is a long list of descriptors of what it means for something to be a function. We use that word pretty casually in mathematics to mean a relationship between x and y, but really we ought to use the word relation most of the time, not function, because there's a lot of things that are relations. Actually, any equation I can think of is a relation because it's a relationship between x and y. But many of those relations are not functions. It takes something special to be a function. So I'll give you an example of something that's a relation and not a function. Okay, if I have an xy coordinate grid and I draw a circle on it, that is a relation. It's a relationship between x and y, but it is not a function because, pay close attention here, there exists a vertical line, quite a few actually, which is going to hit this thing in more than one place. And as soon as it does, it fails the vertical line test, and we can say f of x is not a function. So with that in mind, let me jump into, uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. Hold on, let me jump into this problem. Here we go. I'm told that a vertical line does not intersect in more than one place. So it passes the vertical line test. Okay, by definition. And when you pass a vertical line test, that means f of x is a function. But that's about all I can say. As you read through the rest of this list, see, we've got some things that are obviously wrong, like fails the vertical line test. Well, no, I just said it passed it and is not a function. Well, that's false because I just said it is a function. So those were the obvious false statements. But there's also some things in here which you might be tempted to click on, but we really can't because we don't know. We don't know about anything about the inverse, for example. I have no idea what kind of function this is. All I know is it passed the vertical line test. I don't know if the inverse is a function. It's information I don't have. I don't know if the inverse is not a function. I don't know anything about the horizontal line test, and I don't know if it's one-to-one. -to, -one. to be one-to-one, -one, it would have to pass both the horizontal and vertical line tests. And all I know is that it passed the vertical one. So I can't say it's not one-to-one. -one. And I can't say whether it failed the vertical, the horizontal line test. So we really have a very limited amount of information here. All I know is that I can call f of x a function. Okay, let's move on to the next example. This is similarly structured, but there's a key difference. In this case, well, first of all, I'm talking about a horizontal line, not a vertical one. But there's more than that. Um, I'm told that there is an intersection with g of x more than once. So first thing, notice I'm talking about g of x now, not f of x. This is not the same function I was talking about earlier. This is a totally new relation here. All I'm told is that it, it, it fails the horizontal line test. Okay, so this, for all we know, might be a circle. I'm just going to draw a circle here for argument's sake, but we don't know that that's actually what we're dealing with. But this would fail the horizontal line test because it hits it once right there, once right there. So this relation, um, it failed the horizontal line test. Let's see, is that in here somewhere? Fails, there we go. Fails the horizontal line test. Now that tells us some things. For one thing, it tells us the inverse of g of x, and I'll just put g of x right here. Here's g of x, the circle. It tells us the inverse of g of x is not a function. That's what the horizontal line test is for. Inverse, uh, here we go. Inverse is not a function. And obviously, this next statement is false. I mean, by definition. And so is this one, because I just told you it failed the horizontal line test. Now, all these other statements, to some degree or another, again, we don't have enough information. I can't say anything about whether g of x is a function. I mean, the circle that I drew, it's not a function, but I don't know that that's actually the shape. Okay, all we're told is that it failed the horizontal line test. We're not told anything about the vertical line test. So I can't say anything about the vertical line test. We have to cross all those out. I don't know. I don't know if g of x is a function. Now, when we get to one-to-one, -to -one, this phrase right here, one-to-one, -one, means something special in mathematics. It means something passes both the horizontal and vertical line tests. So think about this logically. I just failed the horizontal line test. Can I be one-to-one, -one, which requires you to pass both tests? Well, no. Since you failed the horizontal line test, we can say that this is not one-to-one. -one. Okay? So that's about that. Now, you might have a problem where these two uh, were switched. Maybe it failed the vertical line test and passed the horizontal line test. So you'd have to think through uh, the arguments here, but it's kind of the same um, sort of thing that I've been talking about. Now, in these last two parts, this goes much quicker. Let's examine this. If g of x is the inverse of f of x, then g of x and f of x are symmetric 
with respect to the line. What, what line? Okay, remember when we talked about inverses in the last section? Here's a line, and I'm going to put its inverse on here in blue. Looks something like, whoa, that was a badly drawn line. Something like this. Okay, they're symmetric about the line y equals x. In other words, it's like you flipped it over that line diagonally. That's what inverses look like. So that line is y equals x. It's never going to be any of these other things. Those are just um, tricks. Okay, it's not y equals negative x. It's, it's, it's none of those. It's just y equals x. You flip it over. It's the inverse. And then in this next final part, it says uh, if g of x is the inverse of f, then... Oh, this is interesting. Okay. So I want to point you to the two true examples, the two true statements in here. The range of f is the domain of g, and the domain of f is the range of g. See how domain and range are switching as you go from the function to its inverse? What that represents is another example of switching x and y. Okay, it's like I'm switching x and y when I switch domain and range. So when I'm talking about the domain of f, I'm talking about the range of f's inverse, g, and vice versa.